Hi, you're welcome to PALS Anatomy. This is where we make anatomy very simple. It's Prosanyam Anatomy Lecture Series, and my name is Professor Anyam Wukot Emeka. In today's lecture, we'll be considering the femoral triangle. This is a very important area of the lower limb. It's one little area that has so many very important structures, and then also with very wonderful clinical significance. So let's go right to class. At the end of our lecture today, I will expect all my students to be able to state the features, the boundaries, the walls, and contents of the femoral triangle. I will also expect all my students to be able to describe the contents of the femoral triangle and the relevant clinical anatomy. So what is this femoral triangle? It's actually a depression, a depression at the front of the thigh. Now in this our illustration, we can see our arrow pointing to this triangular area. It's actually an intermuscular depression at this upper part of the thigh, upper one third of the thigh. So in considering this triangle, we'll look at the side, we we'll also look at the shape, we we'll consider the boundaries, then we we'll look at what forms the roof, what forms the floor, and then we we'll look at the contents. Now, first, let's look at the site. As we said at the beginning, this is the upper part of the thigh, and this is the region of the femoral triangle. It's at the front of the thigh, at the upper one third of the thigh is actually immediately below the inguinal ligament here is the inguinal ligament so it has its upper part called the base that's this region and it has its lower part called the apex so for the shape just like the name implies it is triangular in shape and being a triangle it implies it has a base as we just noted here it also has an apex. It also has a floor, as you noted, it has a roof, it has boundaries. This triangle has three borders. What are those borders? We have this border here called the lateral border. We also have another border here that is the medial border. Now we have the border above and this is the border. And this border apart from being called the superior border, is also called the base. And we have this point where the lateral border meets with the medial border. And we call this point the apex. Here again is the lateral border. The first thing we need to know about the borders will be the structures that form the borders. Now the structure my light is running on is a muscle that is called the sartorius muscle. It's a very long muscle. It runs from the anterior superior iliac spine here, a point in the iliac crest, and then to run distally to be attached in the medial and upper part of the tibia. The medial area of this sartorius muscle will form the lateral border of the femoral triangle. Now we'll look at the medial border. Here again is the medial border. And the muscle forming this medial border is the muscle we call the adductor longus. Now this is the adductor longus. The part of the adductor longus that forms this medial border is the part we call the medial border of the adductor longus. So for the two muscles that form both the lateral border and the medial border, the areas of these muscles are their medial borders. While the sartorius is outside the triangle, the adductor longus is inside the triangle. We will consider the superior border. Now, the superior border is formed by this ligament that runs from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. This ligament is called the inguinal ligament. It is part of a muscle running from the abdomen called external oblique muscle. Now this point, as we noted earlier, is the point where the sartorius overlapped the 
at Dr. Longus. And we said that this area is called the apex of the triangle. The next area we consider of this triangle will be the floor. There are about four muscles forming the floor. If we start from the lateral part here to the medial part here, we will list first the iliacus. Now, very close to the iliacus is another muscle called the psoas. Now, because both of them are always together, tightly held together, we call them the iliopsoas muscle. That's the muscle over here. So they form the two muscles at the lateral aspect of the floor. Now we have another muscle here. That's the muscle here. This muscle is called pectineus. And the last muscle, which also forms its medial border, is the adductor longus. So we have the iliacus here, the psoas major here, both of which are called iliopsoas. We have the pectineus here, and then we have the adductor longus here. This groove between the pectineus and then the iliopsoas is where we find the bulk of the contents of the femoral triangle. The next important part of this triangle is the roof. We have two layers forming the roof. The first part is the superficial layer and then the inner one is the deep layer. The superficial layer has these structures forming it and these are the skin, the superficial fascia with contents of vessels, nerves and lymph nodes. And then the deep layer will be formed by the deep fascia of the thigh, a structure called the fascia lata. Let us consider the superficial fascia. Now the superficial fascia has those structures we mentioned that are found within it. These structures are structures like the femoral artery and their branches, the femoral vein and the vein committants. And the upper part of the greater saphenous vein, the one of the vein committants, and the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, as we can see in this chart. That's the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. We also have some nerves like the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve and also branches of the inguinal nerve. These are structures that are found within the superficial fissure that contribute to form the superficial layer of this roof. For the deep layer, we said it is formed by the deep fissure of the thigh. And then we see this thin structure wrapping around the muscles in this anterior part of the thigh. This structure is called the fascia lata. Now the part of the fascia lata covering the femoral triangle has a roundish opening. Now that's the femoral triangle, the outline here. And then this is the area I want us to know the name. So this fascia lata around this region has an opening here, this roundish opening. This opening is called the saphenous opening. Now this opening allows a vein called the long saphenous vein or the great saphenous vein to pass from the superficial layer to empty into the femoral vein here. That is the structures I just mentioned. We will consider the communications of this triangle. Now we have seen the boundaries and this triangle has communications superiorly it also has communications inferiorly. Now, first of all, consider the communication superiorly. Here is the triangle. And we have communication superiorly deep to the inguinal ligament here. So this area that communicates with this triangle superiorly is the iliac fossa of the abdomen. So superior communication of the femoral triangle is with the iliac fossa of the abdomen and then while inferiorly from the apex it will, con it will communicate with a canal and the name of this canal is the adductor canal. So two communications superiorly the iliac fossa and inferiorly the adductor canal.
Now to a very important part of the triangle, and this is the content of the femoral triangle. We have a number of structures that we noted pass through this region. And these structures are the femoral artery, as you can see here. We also see the femoral vein, as you can also see here. We have the femoral canal, a space that is medial to the femoral vein. We also have femoral nerve and branches. That's the femoral nerve here. We also have another structure, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. That nerve is supposed to run from here towards the lateral part of the inguinal ligament. And then we have the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. That structure will be seen lying between the femoral nerve and the femoral artery. And then we have a layer of fatty tissue that actually scattered within this region that actually has these structures embedded in them. Because we want to make this lecture very brief, I'm going to stop this part of the lecture here and then I'm going to continue the remaining parts of the content in the next video I'm also making. And then in that video, we'll be looking at structures in the femoral triangle and then we'll consider the sheet that actually wrapped around some of the structures we've mentioned. And then these structures, we are looking at the um, femoral artery, femoral vein, and then the femoral canal. But by way of summary, we want to say that we've seen the femoral triangle. We said it is that intermuscular depression at the upper third of the thigh, anterior part of the thigh. We said it has boundaries formed by muscles. On the lateral part, we said we have the sartorius. On the medial part, we saw the adductor longus. On the upper part, we saw the inguinal ligament, and then we talked about the floor. The floor, we noted four muscles, and those muscles are, one, we looked at the iliacus, the suas major, the pectineus, and the adductor longus. For adductor longus, we said it forms both the floor and also the medial border. So if this video has been very helpful, we'd like you to give us a thumbs up, press the like button, and then share the content of this video. Thank you. See you in my next class. God bless you.